So I really didn't plan to make this video or squeeze in another project right now, but Mike reached out about his GT3 RS build a little while ago and asked for a little bit of help with 3D printing. And one of the things we discussed was the DRS system and whether I thought we could make it move. So I said, I don't see why not. I know I seem to mention this a lot, but people are always telling me that they like getting into the details and the weeds of things. So we'll see because there's a lot. Just a few of the things I had to look at was how I'm gonna modify the wings to fix the missing data, make them suitable for printing and assembling, design the mechanism, make sure it moves through the correct range of motion, power it for testing. Will we power it on the final car or will it just be a stationary trick? If so, how will I lock the blade in position? Could I create my own hydroelectric system? The original is hydroelectric and also has specific body mounting points. Will we replicate those on this Porsche or will we make a generic mount that could also maybe go on other cars? Will I control it through the ECU? What inputs would I use? G-force, wheel speed, braking. What are the backups? carbon fiber blades or skinned fiberglass prints. Infill, support, how accurate is the data? Is this really gonna generate 1800 pounds of downforce? Should we do CFD? Can I do all of this from some scan data and photos on the internet? See what I mean? It's a lot, let's get to it. So the files I initially received look like this. And for the panels and general body shape, they seem pretty good. A lot of the parts that Mike since fitted to the car, like the headlights, seem to fit as well as you could hope. But when we get down to a mechanical system like the DRS, there's obviously a lot of intricacy and this information was missing. This isn't a criticism of the guys that made the files. I think the price they're selling them for is more than fair and they've already done a lot of work. However, that leaves me in the position of creating those intricate parts, which in itself is one task, but then made harder by the fact that not only do I not have an actual car to model from, I've never even seen one in real life. Cue a lot of Googling, YouTubing, TikToking and Instagramming and quite a few sketches. And this is what I came up with. This is what's called a five bar mechanism. And I already made a little reel about this previously. So I'm gonna put that in here for you now. Wait, how did you make that? Well, let me show you. This mechanism is what's called a five bar linkage and it's a slightly more complicated version of a four bar linkage. The purpose being that you can get a little more control with the five than the four. There's some maths and geometry involved, but essentially we wanna translate this linear motion of the actuator to a rotational movement of the wing element. So I thought this might be something that you might wanna print yourself and play around with at home. You can get a better idea for how it all works. And that is currently available for free on my website. Just sign up and log in to access the download. But you might be wondering, how do we even go about creating a linkage like this? And to be honest, I only ever had one unit on dynamics of machines or similar, and it didn't allow for as much exploration as I would have liked. As a result, it's always been something that I've wanted to get into, but up until this point, it hasn't really been a priority. Cue more Googling and looking through old textbooks. I am gonna stop here and say two things. The first is, I don't really know a lot about anything really. I spend a lot of time reading and researching and forming an opinion on a topic. I think the absolute fastest way to learn something is to acknowledge what you don't know and ask a lot of questions. The second is, that in mind, I'm gonna show you what I did and what I was thinking about. I would have liked to spend more time in the weeds, fleshing out all possibilities, but being that there's so many intertwining parts, sometimes you've just got to draw a line under it and test it. One good resource I found was this page from the Design Cookbook, which covers design of a four bar mechanism. And while this appears to be a five bar mechanism, the main points I took were, drawing the coupler in its initial and final position, Information I could find online states the wing has 34 degrees of adjustment and the scan data I have shows it in the open position. So I created a sketch and rotated it 34 degrees around my best guess for the pivot point. Drawing the arcs was tricky because I didn't actually know the mounting positions, so I had to make some assumptions. Then, being that we have the rotational element of what I'm gonna call the candy cane linkage, I drew its radius and attempted to start linking parts with some dimensions that I thought made sense using the scan data I had and the subsequent relative size that I could guess from the photos. Finally, I initially thought that this little guy here might be a helper spring, but I've since decided that I think it's something else, which I'll come back to, but for now, it's not important. Basically, this left me with a design that looked like this, which you saw in my previous little video I showed. At this point in the project, I was also incredibly time poor and happened to be chatting to another friend who had a little availability and offered to help with converting the wing profile to a solid which freed me up to focus more on the mechanism. I also did a main design for the uprights, but being that there are a number of slight differences between both of our designs, I stuck with Andrew's and instead requested he redesign a number of things for me, which were mainly necessary due to my poor communication. So thanks again, Andrew. So then I thought it was time to do a print so I could get an idea for how it all actually feels in the physical world. It's actually pretty funny to see in real life because it's not that big. 
nickel for every time I've had that problem. Just keep shooting, Luke! And now I'll take the candy cane mechanism and the two joiners and put it on. Cool. All right, now we need to think more about materials, how we're gonna mount it to the car, and realistically what we're actually doing here. The uprights are gonna be machined aluminum and the mounting tabs for each wing are also gonna be machined. Within each wing, I'm gonna run two lengths of aluminum. I then cut away that profile from each wing and then cut the wing itself into a bunch of lengths so that I can sandwich it all together. Then obviously the end plates will be on either end of the wings and I'll be able to bolt through those and sandwich it all together. Essentially now the wing elements just become covers which go over the top of this aluminum frame. Again, we're gonna pause here because there's a few more things that we should address and probably a couple of questions that you're asking yourself. Yes, we are probably at the limit of applicability for this approach. Should we just create bucks or molds and lay up these wings out of carbon or fiberglass? Probably. If you keep them as 3D prints and skin them in carbon fiber or fiberglass, shouldn't you also offset the profile in order to account for the extra thickness? Yes, I should. What about the infill on the prints? Will they actually hold the aluminum extrusion in place? Maybe. Will the aluminum be strong enough? I'm actually not sure. Theoretically, we could put something that we know is stronger in there, like chromoly, but then we've probably got to ask ourselves what the actual point of this whole system is in the first place. Then you might be thinking, but you're an engineer, engineer it. Yes, okay. But in the first instance, the question that was asked of me was, can we make this wing move? Let's not become the victims of scope creep. Let's make something that actually works in most senses of the word. Then, if the appetite's there, it will serve as a good basis for a V2. The uprights will be strong enough. The geometry will be correct. 90% of the design's already done. We may just need to remake some of the wing elements in order to accommodate the forces. Now we're all on the same page. Let's get this bad boy to work. So as a proof of concept, I've ended up with this micro linear actuator, which is what you've seen in all the videos. This particular one in my hand operates slightly quicker than the other ones that you've seen in the previous videos. But the flip side to that is that it doesn't have quite as much force. The reason I chose the slower ones for the ones that you see on the car is that that was actually the first time that we tried any of them. So I decided to go for a bit of a compromise, a slower action, stronger force, just in case there was any binding or anything like that that it had to overcome initially, because the main purpose of it was just to test it all together. So now you're pretty much up to date. What you see here is what's on the car currently. So that brings us back to the question of what are we actually doing here? We could try and run it as it is on the car, but I'm pretty confident that the motors are gonna burn out. And at the very least, they certainly won't be able to operate at full load. Plus they're not really IP rated and any water ingress, and they're gonna fail pretty quickly. You could probably safely assume that my plan would still be to put some sort of cover over it so that it would look more like the actual car. But although I was trying to initially avoid it, I'm now thinking that I wanna try some sort of hydroelectric setup never made anything like that before so we can learn some stuff together or if you know better you can let me know in the comments they do that day so this is a double acting cylinder that i quickly designed so that i can try and demonstrate the concept this is the piston and this is the end cap but before i get too far into the details let me show you a real world example of how something like this actually works This is a wood splitter, and believe it or not, it's very close in concept to the DRS we're looking at. The engine I just started is a pump, there's a fluid reservoir inside the body, and the piston you see moving in and out here is controlled by the distribution block and lever I'm using. It's obviously able to generate a considerable amount of force. Granted, it is considerably larger than the DRS, but stick with me. This lever is attached to a distribution block that controls the flow and applied pressure of the fluid. This is the input of fluid from the pump, when the lever is pushed forward, the fluid flows to the back of the cylinder here and pushes the piston out. When the lever is pushed backwards, fluid flows to this end of the cylinder and the pressure causes it to retract. This partially hidden line at the back here is the return line to the tank. You can also see that it requires very little force in order to adjust the distribution block and move the cylinder. So, now we're back, you can see that this cylinder is pretty similar to the one we're looking at on the wood splitter. And if we apply pressure on one end, whoops, if we apply pressure on one end, the cylinder moves out. If we apply pressure on the other end, the cylinder moves in. 
That's pretty cool, right? And I know you're probably thinking, but where's the distribution block? Surely you didn't model one of those. Yes, I did. So just like we saw on the other one, input, and then we've got two different positions for in and out, controlled by this piston, which would be attached to a lever and sealed with this end cap. I've literally never tested this. Let's test it now. In. Well, that actually works better than I thought it would, to be honest. But it would be pretty cool if we could see what was actually going on inside both of these cylinders. And you might have noticed that majority of the printing that I do on this channel is FDM based. However, there has been quite a few advancements over the last few years, particularly for hobbyist and semi-professional level users. And I've got this new system here that I'm pretty keen to check out for a few different projects. So let's take a look. This is the Reflex 2 from Hay Gears, and I've been keen to try it out for a while. I'm getting real Blade Runner vibes from the colors and design, so I thought the music should suit. At first glance it seems like a very robust machine, even the build plate is quite substantial, and a few cool features like the auto calibration and leveling, plus this auto wiper, and what looks to be pretty intelligent workflow for the slicing software. This is the first time using this for me, so I'm just going to follow the bouncing ball and see what sort of output we can get right off the bat. For this first print I'm going to be using the PAF10 general purpose resin, but you can see there's quite a few to choose from. All the profiles for the materials come preloaded, so I'm not going to make any changes, I'm just going to get straight into setting up the prints. You can see there's quite a bit to play with, I chose not to hollow out these prints, and the settings I chose were with the goal of achieving a smoother surface, as opposed to a quicker print profile. Once done, you can send the file via cloud or local USB. Being that I tend to be old fashioned and always use a USB, I chose to mix it up this time and attempt to print it via the cloud. You can monitor the printer as well as the wash and cure stations via the Blueprint app and where and which files you'd like to send from the cloud. Through the magic of editing, the prints are ready, the wash station seems pretty straightforward and I've just filled the container with 100% isopropyl. Don't know why I never thought to do this before to be honest, I'm just going to scrape the excess residue back into the vat before dropping the parts into the container. There's a few speed settings, I chose the highest one as these parts aren't particularly fragile, and once done this pretty cool system allows you to drain one container into the other without having to fish the parts out of the bath. At first glance these are looking great, I'm going to set them to cure while I give the build plate a wash as I'm also going to be changing materials. I'm not really sure if this is the best process to be honest, and you can rest assured that I was thinking to myself I should use a funnel here, which I obviously didn't, and had big regrets. Although this bath could obviously be used for another material, Hey Gears also sent me their pulsing release module to try out. Best I can tell is this is a form of compressor and uses air pulses to aid in layer separation, reducing the peeling force and subsequently allowing for a reduction in the required supports. It's not a requirement for most materials, although it is for a couple of them, however I thought I'd give it a go now as I'm about to use their transparent material and I'm chasing as smooth a surface finish as possible. Setup was basically the same as before, except this time I also selected the PRM and spent a bit more time playing around with part orientations to help reduce the amount of supports on the print. I'm always anxious to leave a new printer, but I set this to go overnight and waited in anticipation for the morning. It's been a number of years since I've really printed anything substantial in clear resin, and this has come out amazingly well. Same process as before with the wash station, and even before curing or applying the clear, these are looking pretty good. I'll set these to cure now, and let's talk a little bit about what we've actually made. This clip is from Lunchbox Sessions on YouTube, which is a great demonstration of the function, basically exactly as we saw with the wood splitter. The pump is applying constant pressure, and it's then controlled by the distribution block. The only thing I didn't mention up until this point was the need to also have some pressure relief when pushing the piston from one end to the other, and that's what this middle open outlet is for on my design. Amazing! Okay, 
I would like to mention a couple of things. First off is that these transparent parts came out amazingly well. Honestly, better than I could have hoped for. The reason they've got this little bit of a burnt tinge to them is because I overcooked them. The recommended cure time is somewhere between three to five, maybe 10 minutes. I don't know how well you know me, but I'm pretty easily distracted and I left them in there for 30 minutes. So you can see they've got this nice yellowing to them. However, they're still pretty amazing. I did just put a very light coat of gloss clear over the top of them, but I'll drop in a clip of when they were first printed on the machine and you can see the clarity, it's amazing. I'm very, very keen to do some more prints. Anyway, enough talking, let's take a look. You can see when I'm demonstrating it here that the distribution rod has a tendency to push itself outwards. I suspect this is a combination of too much supply pressure, poor routing of the flow, inappropriately designed relief, and probably also too much friction. But for a V1, I think it does the job. So anyway, now that this is done, you might also be asking yourself what the relevance of doing a pneumatic system is when I'm trying to talk to you about hydraulic. I'm sure you've recognized that the concept is very similar and I wanted to do a combination of learning some things myself and also showing those to you along the way. How do I plan to make this relevant to this? Well, I had a couple of ideas about this. One is that potentially I could run an electric power steering pump like an Astra pump and use that for the hydraulic fluid, but then I'd also need to come up with some form of distribution block and also a way to control it. And then I kept thinking, and I was sure that I'd seen some convertible roofs that were actually powered by hydraulics. So I did a little more research and I came across these. You might notice that the design of these is pretty similar to what we can see on the GT3s. So that's where my ideas are at the moment. You might also remember that much earlier in the video, I mentioned that area on the mechanism that I thought might've been a helper spring. And now I'm actually thinking that it might be a linear potentiometer or a position sensor in order to determine what angle the wing is at. Because the hydraulics are relatively dumb and they don't actually know what position they're in, you would then use something like the potentiometer in order to determine how far in or out it is and therefore what degree the wing would be at. So anyway, that's my idea. I think I might hit up a wrecker and try and get a secondhand hydraulic system that I can play around with and see if I can make something work. But in the meantime, let me know what you thought of the video. Don't forget to jump on the website and download the sample mechanism design. I think I'll also put this double acting cylinder and valve up there for you to play around with as well if you're interested. Please let me know any questions or comments you might have, suggestions for how we might make it better. And in the meantime, I'm gonna go jump in a bath of ice because Australia is hot as